Patrick Sweeney, founder of Odin Technologies. I'm here today to introduce the latest in our benchmark series, the Metal Mount RFID Tag Benchmark. Metal Mount RFID Tags are important because there's been a myth out there that metal and RFID just don't mix. Well, the technology has evolved to the point where metal does work on RFID, and we're here to prove it today. As you can tell from the server cluster we're standing next to, there's tremendous efficiencies to be gained by using RFID in tracking servers, aircraft parts, automotive, manufacturing systems, and really a whole host of opportunities. Our easy monitor software is hosted here in the secure data center, and that's just one use for tracking blades using RFID on a metal mount. We're going to turn it over now to Fareed, one of our engineers, to walk you through the testing that we did for the Metal Tag benchmark. Hi, I'm Fareed Hassani. There is a common misconception that UHF tags are not suitable for use around metallic objects. Basically, these tags are designed to work in a certain frequency band. The tag antenna impedance can be affected by a metal in close proximity, causing the antenna to be detuned. As a result of that, the tag doesn't perform well. There are two primary concepts to design the metal mount RFID tag. The first one is, the antenna tag is purposely detuned in such a way that when it is brought in close proximity to a metal, the antenna tunes back to the required frequency band. Tags of this type are very and extremely sensitive to material type. The second concept is, the tag is designed for a metallic backplane. As the tag is tuned to this backplane, proximity to metal has no effect and wouldn't change the tag performance. There are several factors you need to consider in selecting a right tag in a metallic environment. First, and of course the most important one, is use case. Whether it's a conveyor application, short distance, or a long distance use case. The second one is proximity of other metals, which I explained earlier. And of course, frequency is another factor that we need to consider. Because most of the tags are designed to work in a certain frequency, but of course there are some other tags are global tags. The other thing is geometry of the object to be tagged. This ge uh, geometry determines the dimension and size of the tag. And of course, attachment mechanism is another thing. Sometimes it's not that easy to just stick the tag to the item. You should come up with the right tagging strategy. There were several tests that were used in this benchmark. One of the tests that we conducted was orientation sensitivity. The orientation sensitivity test is important because some tags require a certain orientation relative to the antenna. When a tag goes through the interrogation zone, you don't know what orientation relative to the antenna it's going to have. Therefore, by choosing an orientation insensitive tag, you can improve the probability of a consistent and successful read. This is the setup that we use for the orientation sensitivity test. As you can see, there is an object on a turntable which is tagged by an RFID tag. We change the orientation of the tag relative to the antenna and then capture the power effectiveness of the tag at different orientation. Hope you've enjoyed this insight into Odin's latest benchmark on metal mount tags. We've disproved the myth that RFID doesn't work on metal. So if you have any questions, be sure to contact us at odintechnologies.com. Thanks a lot and look forward to seeing you in the next benchmark.